Okay, so the observer. So the thing with the observer is it's a practice to we'll do it with the and we'll do it the usual way. So this is like um, how I do the observer is ob what is you know, or you could say if there is an object, if there's experiencing of identification with a with an object or there's attachment to an object. So this is a mug, right, uh, that I'm holding up. I am recording, but you can sort of nod or, or shake your head or whatever it is. But is anyone in this room a mug? No, no one's a mug. Okay. So, so, it's, uh, so this is the thing of, of so this is, an, this is an object. Now, when, if there is an object and there is observing of, and there is what I call detached observing, non-attached observing of that object, there is a distance between the observer and the object. There's no confusion. Like if there's a mug in front of you, no one is confused that they are the mug. Uh, so no one's going to debate with me. One of the things with a mug is it's a meaningless object. For most people, unless you're a mug addict, it's a meaningless, <laughs> it's, it's a meaningless object. So no one's going to sort of say, most 99.99% of humanity <laughs> won't be confused that they are the mug. So also, if I move the mug from one place to another, is anyone the mug? So hopefully not, you see. Even if the mug is moving in front of you, you're still not the mug. And if I hide the mug, is anyone the mug? No, no one's the mug. So if it's passing, if it's not there, or if it's held straight in front of your face, it's not the mug. So this is what I call an object, and there's clear observation of the object. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is thoughts. Now, thoughts pass by and, and uh, you know, are, are sort of flicking by. Now, the, the question is, is anyone a thought? So, no. Okay. So, it is to recognize within oneself, if, if there are thoughts going on, just like if there's a mug, if I hold up a mug, if there are thoughts, is one a thought? Or is there, is there a clear spiritual experience that there is observing of thoughts? And that the thoughts are, are are not what I am. This is very. This is a. This is a bit more of a in depth question because, you know, there can be clarity and space that thoughts are absolutely nothing to do with the self of what one is, or there can be confusion. There can be an attachment or enmeshment or thinking. Oh, this this is. I am my thoughts. So if there again, take it back to the mug. If anyone's confused that the, the thoughts, then realize that if, if you're not a mug, and a mug is an object, like the observer of a mug is, cannot be limited to the mug. It must be that which is watching the mug. Right? Is that clear? Mm. So the observer of thoughts cannot be the thoughts. You know, otherwise, you know, what, what is it that is observing the thoughts passing by? Uh, now, if, anyone's, if, any, if there is confusion that the thoughts are what I am, then go to the, um, then, and there is an observer, and there's confusion or enmeshment with the thoughts, then go to the observer of that observer, and see if that observer has any sort of relationship or any sort of uh, attachment to the thoughts. So as you keep doing this, there should be, uh, uh, or keep doing it until there's a spiritual experience that the, the self or the observer is not thoughts. And if you keep going to the observer, if you go to a deeper observer, which has no attachment, then the thoughts will disappear. So here's the thing. With uh, all the objects that are here in this room, when an object is meaningless, uh, completely meaningless, it's not trapped. So there's lots of things in this room which people aren't aware of, because it's so boring and so meaningless and so uninteresting that it's not registered. And this is a thing in consciousness. When something is completely meaningless, you can, you know, even if you were to walk past the street, it would not be recognized. It would not be picked up. Now, if you know, like if, if you're a donut addict and there's a donut stall, then you would notice the donuts, you see, because it's meaningful. Mm. Uh, it has a projection, in of course, in miracles terminology, it has a projection of glamour or specialness onto it. So only things, and when there is a projection of specialness on an object, 
then there can be confusion and the distance of observing starts to escape. Or people can actually be confused that they are the thing or they feel they're, they're connected to the thing that's being, uh, that's being witnessed. But in truth, when something's meaningless, it wouldn't even be registered. So this is one of the things I do in my own spiritual practice, which is if there's anything special, then I go to the observer, and then I go to the observer of that observer, and the idea is to transcend it until it doesn't exist. And that way, uh, you, uh, one starts to experience the eternal presence in the now. So there's the thoughts. And um, if anything passes before an observer and goes past it, can, can it be what you are? If something is passing before, no, okay. Because that which watches things come and go is not coming and going. But that has to be a spiritual experience. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, the next one is the body. Okay, so if there is identification with the body. Now, this is a mug. And this mug has dimensions. It's got a height. It's got like a waist to it, if, if it's a body. So the observer of the body... Oh, sorry, the observer of the mug, you know, that sees the shape of the mug, is not the mug, is it? So if there's, if, if there's experience of the body, yeah, where if people are sitting, I mean, uh, and there's an experience of the body, that which is observing, like the body, you know, the shape of the body, or whatever the body is, that which is observing the body, is it, uh, is it a body? Okay, good. Okay, so... That which observes thought is not of thought. That which is witnessing the body is not the body. Okay, or if, if the observer of the body is identified with the body, then go to the observer of that observer, where there's no interest in the, in the body, and see if the body exists in that which is observing the body. So we've done thoughts, we've done the body. Now here's one, it might be easy or it might not be easy. Um, location. Okay, so is there a sense of being located somewhere? You know, like spatially, is one located somewhere in the room? But then, if there is a sense of location, if there's a sense of a me being located somewhere, then go to the observer of that sense of location. And then see if the observer of location is located in your experience. Now, you have to do this if you're listening, you have to do this yourself. Does location exist in that which observes location? No, good, some people have got it, good. So, so the observer of thoughts is not a thought, but it watches thoughts pass. The observer of the body is not a body. This has to be a spiritual experience, it's not a mental exercise. The observer of location is not in location. Okay, for people who are in the world, I mean, maybe everyone's sort of uh, in, in, enlightened here, but, uh, mm. but um, time, you know, people in, 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 the, in, especially in London, a lot of people are in what I call tracking time. They, they have an awareness of time. You know, they've got like an, uh, like an internal thing that's counting the seconds unconsciously. Now, if there's any sense of time going on, or tracking, what I call tracking of time, Go to that which observes time, or the witnesser of time, and experience if the observer of the sense of time, if time exists in that which observes time. So this is, a, this is um, an, experien an, an experiential thing, I'm saying, it's not a mental thing. So in, in that which observes time, does time exist? And if time exists in that which is observing time, then, go, then that observer is interested in time passing. Mm -hmm. Then go to the observer of that observer, go and see if there's an observer of that observer which has no interest in time. These are experiential questions, and see when it, in the observing in this place if time exists. So these are experiential questions. So we've done location, that which observes location, that which observes time, that which observes thoughts that which observes the body. Now if you've gone to the, if you're with me and you're now in this observer, which is before thoughts, time and location, and before the body, it witnesses these things but is, has detached witnessing and is not in any way related to all of these things. If this observer 
is now if you, this should be an, this is an exper experiential question. If this observer is in any way limited, if this observer, if your experience of self now is in any way limited, in any way has a bound, in any way is changing at all, then go to the observer of that limit or that change or that fluctuation and see now. And then the thing with that is if this now observer, whatever the experience of self is, if this is limited in any way, then go to the observer of that limit. And then see if the true observer is limited by anything. Is, it, you know, is the true observer limited by time? Is it, uh, is it located anywhere? Um, is it changing or passing? Has it got, is it in any way an object? And if it's an object with a limit, then what's observing that? Okay. So, okay. 